Hey guys, Mr. Happy here, and today I want to talk about a game I've been hyped about for a pretty long time, Destiny. I've been playing the beta on the PS3 and I've experienced pretty much everything it has to offer, from a variety of weapons to the foundation of the story and the surprisingly fun PvP. I want to share some of my opinions on my time so far in the beta. For the record, these opinions are my own, are in no way to be considered statements about the game. My opinions also reflect the beta build for the game and are limited to what's available. With that out of the way, I'll start with mostly my positive impressions of the game. So first, let me say that I did play the alpha on the PS4, so downgrading to the PS3 had me concerned, mostly about performance and not about graphics, since I'm not one to pull the old, oh my goodness, the current gen console looks worse than the next gen console. Oh, you don't say, I never would have figured. Despite that, I was pleasantly surprised that the PS3 version runs very smoothly, with my frames only ever dipping on a single story mission. The graphics also show that, despite not being as good as the PS4, it's still a pretty damn good looking PS3 game. As for the gameplay, it feels familiar for anyone who's really played any FPS game in the past decade, though it does come with some interesting twists. There are three classes to choose from, the Titan, Hunter, and Warlock. Your class doesn't restrict your weapon choices, which is something I was initially concerned about, but it, each one does have their own unique set of skills. Eventually, you can equip up to three weapons, a primary, special, and heavy weapon. You can find color-coded ammo boxes dropped by enemies out in the world, and as someone who's colorblind, I still found them very easily distinguishable. Additionally, you get a melee attack that can be enhanced, a special grenade, and a supercharged attack for wiping out enemies, each of which has their own cooldowns and can be enhanced with various gear effects and skills. You get nifty mounts that feel a lot like a personalized Halo Ghost, altered jumps, and a sliding move. And it seems that at level 15, we're going to be able to unlock an additional subclass with its own unique set of abilities that we haven't even gotten to see yet because you can't get to it in the beta. As you gain experience, you level up and unlock these new abilities, and it's always cool to experiment with your new skills when you get them. As for your enemies, the world is littered with enemies that have some pretty good AI. Enemies attempt to strafe away from melee attacks, retreat to cover when injured, and attack in teams. It can also make for some dynamic and fun battles, especially with a lot of the dull AI in the past decade in FPS games. And the bosses, they are relentless. Even with distinguished and easily identifiable weak points, the majority of players will probably find them to be quite challenging, especially if you just go Rambo. The story missions were well done too, being just difficult enough without distracting you from what's actually going on. They introduce basic features early in the game and they have solid guidance. It's also nice to run into other players in the world or be able to team up with these missions for friends. And the story itself is shaping up to be at the very least decent. There's also Explore Zones, which are basically places where players can play through all the areas of the story unhindered. You go around doing basic quests and world events, and it's a good place to grind out achievements, reputation, experience, loot, or just explore. And then there are Strikes, which are basically dungeons if you want to call the MMO equivalent. We only got to test one, but I found that most groups had an extremely tough time with it, especially with the second boss, who has a crazy amount of hit points. He's also a good example of how bosses work in this game, with exposed weak points, as you were able to destroy his cannons, damage his legs, and expose his core to do bonus damage. Bosses and strikes also regularly summon more enemies you can kill to replenish your ammo, and even give players who successfully revive their allies a shield for a short time. It was a ton of fun, and I've run it multiple times with different guns and classes just to get a better feel for it. And the PvP, well, the one we got to test is objective control at its finest. I'm not great at PvP and FPS games, I'll be honest, but I still enjoyed the hell out of this. The only mode we got to test was Dead Sectors, which has two teams of six fighting over three capture points. First to score 20,000, whether it be through kills or objective control, wins. The capture points aren't easily defensible, with multiple angles your enemies can come from, so it keeps the matches interesting. There are two maps in the beta so far, though I only ever got the other map once, but I'll tell you about that later. It reminded me a lot more of Halo than Call of Duty or Battlefield in terms of gameplay for PvP, but I feel that any FPS player could pick it up and play it right away especially considering there are six different modes in the full game. On Saturday, July 19th, the Iron Banner with two more maps will be available for beta testing for a short time, so I'm looking forward to those. However, not everything about the Destiny beta is perfect. Honestly, most of the problems feel like easy fixes, such as not being able to launch to a location directly from the map screen. One of the most annoying things was the inability to skip any cutscenes but the introduction. Considering story missions have multiple difficulties to try, Having to re-watch the story for them every time slows down the game. If Ninja Gaiden on NES can skip cutscenes, I think Bungie can add this in as well. Maybe I'm just missing something, but I couldn't find a way to skip them. Pressing start just took me to my character screen. There's also a lot of loading screens, which look fancy, but they felt a bit too frequent, but I don't see any way around this. Consider it a testament to how much content's in the game. 
The most disappointing feature for me so far in the beta was the explore zone, and it might be a result of the beta just not having much to explore. As far as I'm concerned, in the beta, you can skip it altogether. It's a nice feature for tracking down collectibles, working on achievements, grinding reputation, and randomly discovering super powerful creatures that we'll hopefully be able to take in the full game. But the EXP isn't great, and at times, the world just feels empty, which is only made enjoyable because of the mount. There are also world events, but to be honest, they were pretty disappointing. They're actually pretty difficult to take down, which I enjoy, but you're given such a short period of time and unless you are lucky enough to be playing with friends or have enough competent allies nearby, completing them can be pretty hard. The few world events I encountered also just seem to be rehashes of other enemies or bosses way too often, but I'm hoping this is just a result of the beta. I'd say the only major benefit with Explore Zones is being able to grind EXP and reputation constantly without worrying about those loading screens. PvP also had its share of issues with latency, causing me to trade kills with opponents way too often. I can't count the number of times I've killed an opponent despite being dead before him or vice versa. I also seem to get the same map way too often, but this may be a result of the other map having issues in the beta. I got the other map once, but I was kicked from it mid-match, so that's my guess. And the last issue I had with the beta wasn't really anything to do with the game. Bungie stated before the beta was live that they thought players would be surprised with the amount of content in the beta. And to be honest, I wasn't. Without that kind of statement, I wouldn't even be commenting on this right now. But I managed to get two characters to max level on the beta, which is 8, complete the only strike multiple times, and play about 10 to 15 matches in the Crucible in about 10 hours. While I'm definitely happy with what I played, I'm hoping the remaining levels of the game are filled with a lot more content. They did recently state that the Destiny beta is but a microcosm of the full game, which gets me really excited. My final thoughts? The Destiny beta is exactly what I wanted it to be. There are some small flaws here and there, and the Explorer Zones can be a bit more exciting to play in. Again, that could be a result of the beta not really having much to explore, but it doesn't take away from the rest of the game. Bungie definitely wants to cement this as an FPS game for both PvP and PvE players. Neither side of the game feels half-hearted, and you'll get plenty out of the game if you only play it for one or the other. If you play both, well then I'd consider it to be one of the best $60 you could spend on entertainment on the next-gen systems. If you're on the fence about Destiny and you're a fan of standard FPS games or games like Defiance or Borderlands, I'd say pick it up. You'll definitely get your money's worth based on the beta impressions. Be sure to like, favorite, subscribe, and share for more videos. Hopefully I'll be posting some more Destiny stuff soon. You can like me on Facebook, follow me on Twitter, and you can also follow me on Twitch where I do live stream. But anyway guys, thank you for watching, and until next time, take care.